from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering SAP Sapphire Now 2018. Brought to you by NetApp. Hi, welcome to theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend. We are in Orlando at SAP Sapphire Now 2018. We're in the NetApp booth, talking to all sorts of guests, and we're welcoming to theCUBE for the first time Anand Chalam, the at uh, KPIT, the global leader for SAP at KPIT. Welcome to theCUBE, Anand. Thank you, thank you so much for having me here. So you have been working with SAP in some capacity for 20 years or so. You've no doubt seen a lot of transformation that SAP has under gone since then. You're now with KPIT, who was just named yesterday a Hybris America Service Delivery Partner of the Year. Congratulations. Talk to us about, um, one, the, the evolution that you've seen at SAP, and two, how that excites you um, being on the, uh, the KPIT partner side. Absolutely, absolutely. It's been interesting. This is my 20th Sapphire, so, you know, it's, it's been a long journey, and uh, while today in the keynote, while watching some of the demos, it goes back to, I, we saw a demo by Hasso Platner when they launched mysap.com in Philadelphia. There was a big storm and there was a lot of notion that is SAP going back because internet was new and SAP was not in the bandwagon and SAP was trying to prove themselves that no, they are, and they are an internet-friendly software, and there's a lot of debate whether that's going to be transformed or not. But looking at today, they've done a phenomenal job. I really think the last 10 years, the $50 billion investment which SAP has done through acquisitions, I feel it's, a, it's been a very rewarding to a lot of our customers, our partners, and uh, it's, it's really truly the next generation software which all of us can look forward to to get the most value. So I, I'm personally very excited to see how SAP has really looked ahead and done these acquisitions and more importantly integrating them. I think one of the keys, at least in the ecosystem, I've seen companies they acquire a lot of software, but the biggest challenge is integrating them and making them seamless to the customers. And I think a lot of credit goes to SAP for being able to have a plan and integrate that so it's very seamless. So NetNet, Net, I'm very excited about what's ahead of us. Tell us about KPIT, what do you guys do, and then what do you do specifically with SAP? Got it. You know, so we are in Sapphire, and uh, KPIT's theme this year is Elevate It. Elevate IT or Elevate It. And uh, it's basically elevating to the next level at every level. Whether it's from front office to back office, whether it's integrating the connected devices, whether it's building some intelligent automation in the ERP, whether it is adopting and rolling out a personalized cloud model. All of it we are in, and we're very fortunate to be able to, uh, you know, uh, one is obviously we planned this, we had a planned strategy on which are the focus areas. We were very focused. S4, we are one of the leaders in the S4. We have over 120 HANA implementations, which is pretty sizable. If you see there is going to be some press releases coming out, there has been some by IDC where we are the leaders in S4, and we're excited to see how much of that automation is going to come into the picture. So S4 is a big area of growth for us. Uh, connected devices is because we are a very strong engineering firm, so it comes very naturally how those two uh, engineering and IT come together, and that, that comes along very well. Um, in Hybris, as you said, thank you again. We were very excited to get the Delivery Partner of the Year for Americas, which is a pretty amazing accomplishment given you know the last four years our focus has been. But I think what's more exciting for us is, is the co-innovation we're doing with our customers. Um, as an example, you know, we are co-innovating, building the dealership 
portals for a lot of their dealers, for their customers, and see how that's integrating well. Um, the other aspect is CPQ. Uh, big in configuring products and how they can, one, bring it to market, and two, position that so that the cust their customers are able to configure their products. So we're able to, uh, doing a lot of that. We are Uberizing service to see on an on-demand model how is it that they can provide. So lots of activity around that area as well. So Anna, talk to us, 20 years is a long time to have observed and participated in the SAP ecosystem. I think it would be fair to say that 20 years ago, the conversation in a typical enterprise would be, you know what, we're waiting on SAP, whether it's some innovation, practically some batch file process to end, to now we're in a market that SAP is driving business. Can you talk to us about the importance of the relationship of this trifecta of SAP, NetApp, KPIT? How do you guys bring this new business capability? What's the critical components of you bringing this new critical capability to customers where you can now say that innovations that KPIT, whether it's Hybris or S4, coupled with NetApp is able to bring innovation to the I, to uh, digital transformation. Excellent, good, good point. I think um, as, uh, I think we've not, uh, I'm stating the obvious, there has been so much changes happening in the IT world that it's very important, I believe, to coexist with partners. And that's where I see the SAP, NetApp, KPID partnership is a very critical one, right? Because all of them bring such critical components to bear that we really can use the software, the infrastructure, the disaster recovery, the implementation services, and the IP which bring to, to the table, bundle it together to see some very fast outcomes. I'll give you an example. We just went live with an S4 implementation. And day one, day one, we had a 40% increase in order entry, which is phenomenal. So the point being, 20 years back, that would be unheard of. It would be like, oh, if we go live and we still can we enter can some orders, right. we were great. <laughs> but we, so the velocity, aspect has increased tremendously. That comes through all these partnerships, the underlying infrastructure which supports the software and the people and the processes which come into bear. So it's very important that the trifecta effect is seen and outcomes which customers really benefit from. Who are you talking to when, when you guys are going in together as this partnership that you, you just articulated? Who are you talking to? I mean, because the C-suite has shifted so much, right? Um, I, I was reading on the, from the CMO Council that 67% of marketing execs rank marketing and commerce technology is critical to their uh, overall performance. You know, you've got the chief digital officers who have to drive cultural change, the CIO who needs to be bimodal. When you guys are talking with customers, what are, what are those conversations like? What's driving the innovation that KPIT needs to deliver for these customers? No, very good point. Um, so, uh, we, uh, we started adopting some of the newer areas to see some of the benefits which customers are looking for. As an example, one of our customers who make packaging machines, they wanted to see how they can overall reduce their service costs by 20%, and how they can implement an IoT-based solution on Leonardo Connected Goods to help reduce and build a new business model. So what, in this new age, it's just not about implementing a software, it's about how does it drive efficiency by reducing cost, but more importantly, how does it spur and build new business models? So it's no longer restricted to 
an IT solution. I think in this digital era, it's more important how does how does it look differently? How are the models which we never thought about before are being brought in? And you know, we were we were part of the Medallion Select Group of Leonardo Partners, and we're very proud to see how that grows. What excites you about that? Because I just saw that uh, announcement come out yesterday. Um, tell us a little bit about KPIT's SAP Leonardo Innovation Portfolio and what you're delivering or will be delivering to customers with respect yeah, to you that. Know, we're, we're focusing in uh, many areas, but uh, the couple which uh, come to mind is connected goods. So this is an example where we talk about how we reduce the overall service cost by 20%, right? By just implementing something around that lines. We're also do, doing a lot of work on the predictive maintenance side of things, where being able to predict failures before it happens to reduce the downtime and increase the overall productivity. We're, KPID is big in automotive and the vehicle insights are something which we are working with closely to build some of those outcome-based models, which I think will be very much beneficial to a lot of the customers we have seen. So, if we were alive, John Furrier would be DMing us and saying, this is a perfect opportunity to ask about blockchain and general. So let's just, not, not to jump on the blockchain bandwagon, let's talk about other enabling applications, including blockchain. As you look out the, to, into the next few years, how important is SAP becoming a true platform company that embraces technologies such as blockchain? or uh, they're reaching out to internet of things and manufacturing companies and solutions, other supply chain integration points. How important is SAP's participation, partic participation in the larger ecosystem and technology? Uh, how, how important is that to the overall success of this partnership? You know, I think um, the concept of intelligent enterprise is truly evolving in SAP. What it's helping, um, I think, a lot of customers do is, it's connecting the dots between the cust their customer experiences, right, the 360 degree view of their customers. It's looking at connected devices, where there are so many devices out there, how do we bring that to the table? It's building a lot of intelligent automation, it's connecting, it's building connected factories so that the production efficiency is where I think there's a lot of emphasis in the next few years going to happen. And of course supply chain, right? Where there has been the case. I think what it's bringing it all together to really have an intelligent enterprise where using, whether it's blockchain, using machine learning, to be able to bring that together, because I think in isolation there are benefits, but I think the power of all of this is how do we bring it together in a very seamless manner? And that's what's very exciting. When they announced that this morning, speaking of integration, the um, C4 HANA, they talked about that. I thought they did a, a good job of showing integrations and talking about that, but if I kind of distill that down to one of the things that, that their CEO has been really vocal about it's got to modernize legacy CRM and connect, synchronize the supply chain with the demand chain. With what they're doing, this momentum that the SAP is carrying through, how do you see that as a differentiator for KPIT's business to be a partner with SAP? Absolutely. You know, fortunately for us, we've been very strong in the three generation CRMs, right? I know we are now talking about the fourth generation CRM, which is the C for HANA. And, uh, but having lived through the journey of the three generations, I think KPID is a very unique uh, proposition in the marketplace. We, uh, we know very importantly what not to do. What are the things which did not work? I think that's a very important aspect, which I think SAP themselves have learned, and that's probably why they're talking about the fourth generation uh, CRM. And I think we are in a very unique position, and uh, that's the example. We have 
implemented this for a long time, and I see that with their integration, what they've done with some of the other softwares, like Calidus, this is going to be a very a complete portfolio of solutions which they can offer, which I think KPIT is in a very unique position, whether it's uh, cloud for service, cloud for sales, hybrid commerce, the Calidus commissions. We're very well positioned to be able to provide all of this to our customers. So the portfolio is a lot more enriched, and uh, I think it's going to be very rewarding. What are some of the things in terms of all those announcements that you're looking forward to at Sapphire this year in terms of, I can imagine there's a wealth of, I think there's a thousand SAP sessions alone from an education perspective. Is your team here ready to, uh, you said your theme was elevate, elevate it. Yes. Um, what are some of the things that you're excited to learn how to do for those boots on the ground? I think one of the areas we are excited about is we're seeing the S4 adoption going up. I think that's, we're very excited about that. Is it 1,800 customers? Y yes, and there's lots, and lots to go, but I think, uh, yeah. There's a lot of opportunity here. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, so I think that's one we want to make sure, and then I think the intelligent enterprise, I think we're very excited about that, along with the data hub. I know it's early days, but we'll closely be watching that because data is going to be a critical aspect for all of this to be successful. So I think we're right on, very excited to see those three, four areas, and um, I think we're well positioned to really be able to get, take this momentum to the next level. So you said this was your 20th Sapphire. I think when I was doing some research on this event, it looked like they had done this for about 25 years. Wow. So do you remember back 20 years ago, like the, how many people were at Sapphire back then compared to the 20-something <laughs> yeah. thousand that are just here physically this week? Yeah, I, I still remember, I think it was 99 Sapphire in Las Vegas. That was the only Sapphire happened in Vegas. It's easier for me, I don't know why they don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but, really? Yeah, and <laughs> so there I was sitting and one of the big areas we were very excited was if I was able to enter uh, sales order in uh, HP Jornado, believe it or not, it was one of the handle devices. Mm -hmm, I remember that. And we were very excited to see, oh, we are able to enter an order in an HP Jornado. And today we're talking about virtual reality where we are able to look at stuff, change the colors, and be able to order just looking at what you like. Transparently. Yeah, it is unbelievable the change. So to your point, it's lots of change all the way around, whether it's technology, whether it's expectations, whether it's the number of people, number of sessions. And you know, we ourselves have got about 12 sessions, customer sessions in this Sapphire. We used to have two or three at the most. Wow, wow. So there's, that, a, there's customer centers here in theaters. Yes, and, absolutely. So, wow another 20-year perspective and looking towards the future. One of the great things about SAP is also one of the challenges. 20 year, 20, 46 years of, of technology and moving customers along, SAP, HANA, no question, it changes businesses. The, for, the stat you gave earlier, 40% more order, orders in one single day, day one. However, what are some of the major barriers that customers face with legacy infrastructure and in moving into the S and in, in taking advantage of uh, S4 HANA? Is it customization of environments that they did? Is it business processes? Like, what, what's the top one or two challenges customers have? Very, face? very good point, actually. I'm glad you brought this yeah. up. We've been at this for four years. In fact, one of the first HANA migrations was done by KPIT at Wade and Medical, one of the very early days. So from my perspective, the customers are looking to reduce risk because they've been working on SAP for such a long time. They've built it, it's evolved, it's customized. So how do we reduce risk? In fact, KPIT has built an harnetization tool which automatically correct codes so that it takes away the reduce the risks and reduces the time. So that's one aspect is customers are very worried about the risk aspect. Second is of course the cost, because they don't want to be spending time in just implementing another system. They want to take leverage about the intelligence which can build in the different processes, the advantage. 
So they do want to make sure that that aspect is there. But I think the biggest aspect is they are looking for the business nuggets. You know, what we talked about, can this propel them into different business models? Can this be relevant for the next 20 years? Because this is a big investment and that's one of the big roadmap discussions we are having with a lot of our customers. Relevance, you know, you really hit the nail on the head. Customers have to be relevant. They have to be able to compete and become intelligent in order to do that. Well, Anand, I wish we had more time, but we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us on theCUBE. And again, congratulations on the uh, award, the Service Delivery Partner of the Year for Hybris that KPIT has won. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks for getting me here. Our pleasure. Okay. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend. We are at Sapphire Now 2018. Thanks for watching.